The bulk of advice on how to meet quality men focuses on either ways to look sexier, more attractive, or what places to visit and what apps to use. But there's a foundational flaw in these ideas. None of them address the practical elements of your psychology, mindset, or blind spots without which your dating efforts become a waste of time. So today I'm revealing the seven best ways to meet better men that you're not thinking about but can make a night and day difference in your ability to attract the guy you want much faster. The reason I'm recording this video is because it's time. From the beginning of time, women have had the short end of the stick as it relates to intimacy, to men, and to love. And for the first time in human history, right around now, women have a chance to experience deep, compassionate, fulfilling love at every level of spectrum, from physical, to sexual, to emotional, to spiritual. And this wasn't the case a century ago. This wasn't even the case a few decades ago. I'm sharing this message with you right now, because even though you might be finding yourself in an ocean of guys who don't seem to give you what you want, there is a way for you to meet better men. And this way doesn't center around you changing your looks or becoming younger, but about you understanding some practical elements that can make it easier and faster for you to meet the type of love that the people in your generations before you didn't have a chance to experience. I tend to think that many women today are standing in the shoulders of giants. That means that maybe your grandma or your great grandma or your great great grandma lived and died in such a way that you now have a possibility to experience what they didn't. So we owe it to ourselves to go for more, to not let the life experience that you want in terms of love to go on experience because you have the feeling that you couldn't get what you wanted. I'm here to tell you that there's a strategy in a way, and I know this based on hundreds of clients experiencing this, where you can be the exception rather than the rule. The first way you can meet better men is to be more conscious in your redefinition of what a better man means. And here's what I mean by that. If you have to choose, and not that you have to, but if you have to choose only, only three qualities to go for a man, do you know what those qualities would be for you? And if you list them, are some of those qualities more cosmetic in nature, more feeling-based in a way that may not serve you as much? Now, I'm the first person to say you shouldn't lower your standards to meet great men. I'm also the first one to say that sometimes some of what you may be going for may be unnecessary, scientifically proven to be unnecessary to you have a fulfilling experience in a relationship. And I'm talking about if those three things include a level of income, and maybe physical attributes, you can go for those things, but you might be severely limiting your experience of a guy. My recommendation is when you redefine what you really want is that you choose character and substance and emotional traits over physical or chemical traits that I'll go into in a second. The second way to meet better men is to lower what I call the IEC, intimacy expectations for chemistry. So here's what I mean by that. I think that it's fair to say that you have an expectation of the level of passion and excitement and spark that has to happen for you to say, yeah, I'm willing to risk it with this guy. And that's not a problem. The problem is if you want that to happen quicker than it needs to be based on centuries of BS and stories and movies and <laughs> Cinderella's that tell you that it's first sight when you connect with someone, you feel it right away. When you go for that type of experience, you stop giving a chance to guys who would have been incredible lovers and that you could have developed that level of chemistry afterwards, but you didn't allow that to develop because you were seeking for that instant thrill. And when you seek for the instant thrill, you typically get to connect with guys who are not good for you. Number three is focus on expression rather than beauty. I have to say it, you've gotten the short end of the stick as it relates to your body image. Why? Because men, society, and unfortunately women too now have created this thing where to fit in, have to look in a very specific way. And the problem with that vision is A, it's not true. Men are attracted to all sorts of women, even though there's a model definition that some people like to follow, you have zero control over those things. At worst, you have the going to plastic surgery for something that may be unnecessary. Because if you have to change your physical attribute that there's nothing wrong with for a guy to like you, that's not the right guy for you. So you have much more influence and control over the way you express yourself. If you focus on expression, if you focus on your light, 
if you focus on the expression of your light, which is radiance, if you focus on that and not on beauty, not on age, you stand a chance to A, feel far more confident in your ability to get what you want, feel more resonant to more men. I've had many clients who, after starting their work, they go out and they haven't changed a single thing other than the way they express themselves. And they've been stopped in the street for the first time sometime in years by somebody saying, you look so beautiful. And it's not a guy that I paid to say that. This is something that's happening naturally in their own city. So when you recognize that you have the immense power inside of yourself to create that feeling of attraction, then you devolve more of your time into something that creates a bigger return of your investment, which is radiance. Number four, it's not the where, it's the who. Women ask me all the time, where can I meet this elusive, awesome guy? And my thing is, who is the I who's going to go out to meet this guy? So granted, at a high level, there's going to be better places than others to connect with men. But the truth is, you can connect with men at the laundromat. You can connect with men at the bank. You can connect with men at the grocery store. You can connect with men at the rock climbing gym, at the movie theater. There's so many places to connect with guys. But the problem isn't necessarily just where to meet them. Is what version of you is meeting them? Is it the you that is open and radiant and exciting and playful and confident, initiating conversations? Or is it the version of you who is more shy and doesn't make eye contact? And when she sees a guy who is really attractive, plays hard to get, what version of you is going out there to connect with men? It matters. When you train your nervous system to be on the lookout for opportunities, then you can create many more openings than you ever thought of. Now, before I share my last three points, which are really practical and useful, if you're a single woman watching this, you're not fully aware of why you're still single. You can't understand why you're still single. I've created a quiz after 13 years of helping women find love when they hadn't before we worked together and put it together in something very simple that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first thing in the description. You're going to see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds, you have two things. Answer to the elusive question why you're still single, and a custom report that's going to share for your specific blind spot what's the number one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Now, the fifth way to attract better men is to make the first move all the time. What is the first move? Eye contact. What is the first move? Smiling. What is the first move? Maybe asking a question. When you are the kind of woman who is willing and eager and generous in dropping the handkerchief and making sure that the guy that she's interested in knows that she's available. You're not saying I'm needy. You're not saying I want to be your girlfriend. You're saying I'm open. I might say yes if you ask me correctly. When you have that attitude inside of you and you make openings, you create openings everywhere you go, then you have unlimited opportunities to meet men who might be higher quality. Am I saying that every guy you connect with will be high quality? No. I'm saying that when you take the next step, which is point number six, ask better questions, you'll find out. The biggest difference between a great first date and a shitty first date is the preparation. And here's what I mean by that. If you connect with a guy and you ask great questions and you take the time and lay the boundary of, I need to connect with you on video first before I see you in person. And if the guy doesn't want to do that, you say no. And if the guy says yes, then you meet him on video which means you can see his face, you can see his facial expressions, you can see the way he connects, you can see the way he asks questions. You can gauge a lot more. I'm not saying you can need to check for that spark in that first call, but you can check for some things that would have been blatant red flags if you only talk to the guy on the phone or if you only text on the app. So when you see the guy and you ask great questions and you qualify, guess what happens? You either move to the date, which will be a much better date after qualifying properly, or you say no thanks, which means you have fewer dates but the ones you do have are better quality. The last way for you to connect with better men and find your guy much sooner is to use all the tools available at your disposal. And what I mean by that is be creative. You have friends who know guys. You have networks of people where there's awesome guys. You have apps you can use who have great guys. And here's the biggest kick I get of apps. Many women tell me that apps don't work and it's BS. They do work. There's so many women who are getting married after connecting on an app. Is it easy to connect on an app? No, it's not, but it's doable. If you learn how to use apps, that's one of the benefits of coaching. You learn the mindset and the practical strategies of using apps, but you can make apps work for you versus being used by apps. I hear women who say, oh, the guy I want would never be on an app. And I think that's insane. 
It's like saying the person I want to hire for a job would never be on LinkedIn. It's ridiculous. Why not? It's a network of human beings who are interested in connection. Now, am I saying all the guys are on apps? No, but many guys are on apps. And if you learn to use them properly, you can make something work. Now, that's just one of the tools. Going out to more places from that better, more enchanting self is one of the strategies. Connecting with friends is one of the strategies. There's many things you can do to connect with guys, but if you use more tools, you can exponentially magnify your reach. If you only use one, if you only use app, for example, or if you only use organic connections, then you can take a lot longer to get what you want. Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel, because this is how I reach more women. If you could like and subscribe, if you see someone who needs to hear this, please send it their way. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.